Hey yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Keith, and on Armada's request I am creating a new Orcus tutorial that is a bit more updated and has the new features that everyone's been asking for. Um, unlike my previous tutorial, I will not be doing port forwarding. Um, that's up to you guys this time. I'll just be doing the setup and explaining the new features that have arrived. We'll be going over the registration progress, pretty much everything. So once you purchase Orcus, you'll get a li license key in your email. You're gonna go to their website, which is orcustechnologies.com and hit download. Um, you're gonna choose the latest version that is available to you, which is 1.921 for me. You're gonna fill in your license key. I've already done this. And you're gonna click download. You're just gonna click open with WinRAR or 7-zip if you got 7-zip. <coughs> Everybody uses WinRAR, dude. You're gonna extract to a folder, a clean folder on your desktop or whatever you would like. I've already created one. It's called Orcus Tutorial. I'm gonna click OK. And you're gonna head over to that folder. As you can see, I'm gonna open that and you're gonna click on orcusadministration.exe. Gonna run it and it's gonna ask you, f well, it's gonna welcome you and it's gonna ask you what language you'd like to use. I'm just gonna use English since it's the most universal language. Here we go. Read all of this, guys. It's legal information, you know make sure you read all of it and you're gonna click next choose a team I personally prefer the dark team but we'll, we'll do light just for this video hit next and you're gonna fill in your license key again this is gonna complete your registration verifying license success there you go it's gonna create license.orcus finish and it's gonna open up the main orcus panel for you gonna click on create new server this is the first thing you gotta do now let, let me just remove this if you're running the server on the same computer that you're gonna be actually running Orcus administration on fill in this number and your open port which is 1002 for me you're also gonna fill in your IPv4 which considering you've port forwarded you already know how to find that so there you go click add and then you're gonna choose a password which for this tutorial is just gonna be password um, your GIIP location um, you don't have to use this you can use this um, Orcus has this map feature that you can see your clients locations on if you do want to use that feature you just click register here fill in an email and password and that email and password you're gonna fill in here once you've done that, make sure you choose GUI and click build. Not really much point to changing the build location, so just click save. There you go. Now, if you go to your Orcus main folder, you'll see that you now have a server. You're going to click on that and it has Orcus server.exe. You're going to go ahead and run that. <coughs> now, if you did everything correctly, this is what it should look like for you. Um, you shouldn't see any error messages. It should just say listener started, listener started. Um, what you're gonna do then is head over to, make sure your running is true by the way. I'm gonna head over to Orcus administration. If you're using um, Orcus on the same computer, that you're running the server on you can just fill in that if not you'll probably you're gonna want to use your public IP to connect to this password was of course password and then you're gonna click connect you're now inside of Orcus main administration that's the biggest step done pretty much um, we're also gonna go over builder while well, the builder and some other features that people have been having issues with and then we're gonna end the video gonna keep it short and simple general settings really not much to be changed here you can activate the keylogger if you want it's all up to you um, you can use this but I, I just wouldn't do it you're gonna head over to connection now here you're gonna fill in your public IP address how do you find your public IP address well, you find your public IP address by going to sites like what's my IP and that kind of stuff. 
Um, I'm not going to do that since I'm going to be running it on a virtual machine in my home network. So I'm just going to fill in my IPv4. But you want your public IP here. Um, you can leave everything else default. And then you're going to click add, which I've already done. Um, you're going to head over to protection, which is going to make sure that your client cannot um, end the process inside of your task manager. You've got respawn task, which I mean, it states right here what it does. And then you've got the watchdog. Now, Armada explained this to me as a little extra application that just makes sure that Orcus keeps running. It's going to be a separate process. It's going to be dropped in one of these two folders you can choose and you can give it some extra protection, you know, if, if you'd like that. <coughs> I'm going to head over to installation. Now you're going to make sure that you have this installed. Um, checked. If you don't, your client is not going to come back after restart. So that's pretty important. Um, you can disable the installation prompt, but I wouldn't do that. Here, um, I just leave all of this default, but if you don't want administrator rights from the start, you can just do it like that. Otherwise, it's going to prompt for administrator. Auto start, I mean, pretty much the same as your install client. Here you just choose how it's going to go. So register your task scheduler and you got a service. Now a lot of people have been having issues with it. Armada explained it to me like this. Um, if you do check this and your client runs it as an administrator, what it's going to do is going to install Orcus as a system process. Now this is going to make it treat it like stuff like task manager which is just going to be good you're going to have administrative rights all over the system but your client does need to run with administrative rights to do that so there you go assembly i mean if you know how assembly works you can do that if not it doesn't have to be done it makes ma it really makes no difference make sure you do choose the correct framework version for your client although 3.5 is a pretty safe bet plugins i don't actually have any of the plugins installed but I, I can show you guys how to do that no problem and you're gonna click build make sure you agree to the um, the ULA which is of course more legal stuff which you know just has to be done and you're gonna click build um, I'm just gonna save it here we're gonna call it um, Orcus testing there we go I'm gonna fire up my virtual machine which is going to be my test dummy for this little video. Also, what I forgot to mention is you got this save icon right here. So let's say you pretty much always plan on using the same settings. You can just give it a name here and you'll always have it ready to use in just one simple click. So that's pretty neat. That's taking quite a while. Well, can't really do anything about that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this file into my shared folder where all my virtual machine stuff is and we're just gonna give it a second while my virtual machine does all of this stuff. Meanwhile we can actually look at plugins. Um, you're gonna click on plugins here and here you can browse plugins. It's really simple. Um, this is something most people are going to use because it's what makes Orcus invisible, um, which well, obviously you'll need if you don't want your client to uninstall this stuff. Uh, you just click download. That's all you got to do. It's going to say installed. Now next time you open your builder, there you go. You just click there and it's enabled. That's all you got to do. That's how easy the plugin system is. All right. Let me just run this file. And we're going to give it a second. Wait for the installation prompt to show up. Install. Yes. We definitely want it to install orcus.exe 
and we're just gonna give it one second just one second maybe two there we go we're just taking a little while once you've got this well, let me go over all of this stuff real quick. So crowd control, what is crowd control? It's on join commands pretty much. It's expanded on join commands. You can set um, commands to execute on your clients and you can put triggers like do it immediately or do it at that set date and time or when they first join your net, all of that cool stuff. You got some conditions let's say only Windows 10 needs to um, you only need to do this command on Windows 10 computers and you can just say operating system I only want to do Windows 10 Windows 8 to Windows 10 see that that's how simple it is that's all that stuff is so really neat really cool um, this is just error messages from Orcus itself we'll get into that in a bit this is the GUI location map that I told you about, which is not going to function since I don't have that enabled. Some statistics about Orcus itself, not your computer, actual Orcus, and same here. It's not using any of my CPU, well it's almost using 1% and just a very very small amount of memory. Now we're going to go into the actual client. So the first thing you're going to do, well you got data. If you want to view their password or files, you, got, you can do that the easy way, but generally you're going to want to log in. So you're going to click login. You're now logged into your client. Now this is where all the good stuff happens. You got your little control panel, which is just going to tell you some basic stuff, like if you got the Windows Surface enabled, if you got administrator or not. You can prompt for administrator, uninstall, or just kill the process from here. Here you got some commands, which is pretty much the crowd control tab, but then for your client only. Here you got some configuration, which you can't change anything about. It's just stuff about your client and your binary file. Drop and execute. Um, it's just to drop and execute files, and you can also put some arguments, which is basically code like, you know, stuff like that. Um, you can do batch C sharp and visual basic commands here uh, The plugins tab it's gonna show you if your client has any plugins well your binary on that client which mine doesn't The reverse proxy I mean, I'm sure I know a lot of you know how to use that But it's gonna allow you to use your clients IP address <coughs> Excuse me active connections just all sorts of information the clipboard you can edit your clients key clipboard if you want it's gonna show you what he has computer refresh I mean all of this is really simple guys there's nothing you know really standing out just some system information operating system information the bios passwords I mean we, I'm not gonna click that but you can get the passwords from your clients performance just your overall you make sure you click on this or it's not gonna work this is just gonna monitor your clients uh, CPU memory and that's my network adapter so network too. fun you know if your clients being annoying or is not doing his job you know just 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 make him freak out a little bit you know that's what he deserves he should be doing his job now the common tab is where you're gonna be spending most of your time you know desktop show hide it, it does a lot of this stuff enable disable task manager open CD drive swap mouse disable user input if you want you know if you just need to take control of the system for a little bit that's totally fine you can do that shut down the computer restart it rotate the monitor because why not let it burn because who doesn't want to let it burn sometimes you got a chat box for if you want to chat with your clients there you go as you can see hello and your clients can type back to you this is how you're going to be doing most of your conversation stuff you got code if you want to 
um, run some actual code onto your client you can actually do that as you can see you can write your code and click send hey there that's just a bas basic template for hey there uh, you got a message box if you don't want to do the whole coding let's make it simple you know hello I am support and you're just gonna send that and there you go user interaction text-to-speech you know the Windows voice thing that's what text-to-speech is notepad balloon tooltip that's the things you sometimes see pop up over here those are balloon tooltips voice chat if you want to go chat with your mic uh, with your clients excuse me you can do that console if you want to type something into your console about uh, your clients console but make sure you can enable it and the device manager which just shows you stuff like drivers and stuff that's connected to the <coughs> uh, computer oops what else do we got driver configuration just a whole lot of stuff you got the file explorer if you want to go into his video see what he's been doing you can do that registry if you want to look into his registry maybe make some changes you can do that it's all fine startup manager see what your client is uh, running on startup as you can see that's what I'm running on startup this is just my virtual machine this is Java and this is something else that I've been testing system restore just go you know if you if you need to do a system restore or create an actual system restore point you can do that no problem task manager if you wanna end these tasks or you know suspend them all that stuff you can do that and it just goes on now the only thing I'd like to touch up on real quick is this the Windows customizer it's basically just a little operating system customizer you know you can say I want to error report or uh, clear page file after shutdown all that kind of stuff re reserve bandwidth for the system um, you can do that here not necessary but you you can do that and then something also that's new about the 1.9 version is as you can see I got this little icon here if you click on that it actually allows you to drag these windows out of the original program so you can do a lot of things at the same time while looking at your client which is really really good um, overall that's all you really need to know if you do have more questions which I'm sure some of you will do Orcus has a very capable support team which you can find at this link if you did not know yet just go ahead and make a ticket I'm sure they'll help you um, yeah that was it I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time